All right. So we are starting module three today. And module three is all about, it's going to be a lot of nonfiction stories. And we're just going to start by talking about what we know. So I'm going to write something on the board. Where's my spray? The spray's up right here. The spray does not go over there. I have it there. Well, why don't you grab it for me? Because you're the one that got it off to begin with. I started the whole here. train. You started the whole train. All right, can someone please read the board for me? Evan, nice and loud. Natural disasters, what do you know? All right, so module three is all about natural disasters. So together, we're just gonna make a big giant list about anything we know about natural disasters. And if you don't know anything, that's okay because that's what we're gonna be learning about. So if you don't know anything, that's okay. But if you know something about natural disasters or you know a natural disaster, raise your hand, Evan. Tsunami. Probably zombies because they don't get away in time. That was unnecessary. What you could have said was tsunami. <laughs> Evan, only warning. Okay, we are having class. Mr. Mark said volcano. Landed. Hurricane. What else? Rochelle. What? Tornado. What else? Kylin. Sandstorm. Sandstorm. Marissa. Snowstorm. Which is actually called a blizzard. Mark said a typhoon. It's another type of like tropical tsunami type thing. Um, oh. Ooh, Isaac said they can can damage the environment every once in a while. Not normally, but sometimes can help the environment. Evan. We have tornado. Hurricane. We have hurricane. An earthquake. Landon. Mudslide. A mudslide. And then I'm also gonna put um, slash a landslide because those kind of go together. Yeah. Slash avalanche. Those kind of all go together. They're all like land, mud, whatever, sliding. Zachary? Uh, pothole. That's not a natural disaster. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not disastrous. Okay, so Mount Everest. Ooh, a flood. Oh, yeah, that thing. Flood slash flash flood. Flash flood. Flash flood. Flash flood. Flash flood. Flash We're going to talk more about it. I love. I don't know anywhere that quicksand's a real thing, unless it's made by a person. That one, there's one place, but it's not a disaster at all. It's people know about quicksand it. Is natural. Yes, but it's not a disaster. It's just a thing. It doesn't mean like a sand dune's a thing. It doesn't mean it's a natural disaster. It's natural, yes, but it's not disastrous. Mark said wildfire. I'm gonna put slash um, forest fire. I think we're gonna talk more about these things and how they come to you know this lovely thing rochelle house fire is not a natural disaster we're going to talk more about it in a little bit evan okay that is a specific hurricane we already have hurricane down okay we're not gonna name every hurricane that's ever happened because we'd be here for days okay no hurricane matthew would be a singular hurricane zach not a natural disaster. All right, so, so far we have wildfire slash forest oh, fires, yeah. tsunamis, yeah. blizzards, can damage the environment, can help the environment, um, flood slash flash flood, typhoon, hurricane, blizzard, sandstorm, volcano, earthquake, tornado, mudslide, landslide, avalanche. How 
about can people get hurt in these? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to say can cause injury or even death. death. You can die in some of these. Um, you can die from all of them. How about can we get a, a tsunami in Indiana? No. 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 So we're going to put um, some happen in certain areas because we cannot get a, uh, a tsunami here in indiana because like we're not surrounded by an ocean or anything like that but other places can't what right we also can't get a sandstorm here in indiana indiana because we're not part of the desert how about are all hurricanes the same power like the same no, strength no, no. no neither are all tornadoes so we can say some natural Disasters, we could say, are stronger than others. The last one. Yes. Some natural disasters have different types of levels, so I don't know. That is literally what we're saying. Literally, stronger than others, different levels. The exact same thing no, I like just said. Hurricanes and, and tornadoes yes. have different levels. I, is that not what I just said about yeah, how a hurricane and a tornado? Literally, exactly what I just said. You need to listen. Are stronger than some others. And a level five would be stronger than a level four. Use your brain, okay? We're thinking. I already <laughs> said that, okay? Hey, I raise your hand if you think that I already just said what he's talking about. He said it, you said it was one plus one second. Literally, okay? He so that would require you to pay attention. We're not arguing, Landon. You're just going to listen, okay? I know okay? what you're saying, then you said it a different way than I I thought. specifically said levels. I just didn't write it as levels. Stop interrupting me. Oh, look, even Mark raised his hand, and he's at home. Well, yeah, he can hear you. All right. So, um, so, okay, that's a pretty good amount of stuff that we have. But now let's talk a little bit more about it, okay? So, we have some can happen in certain areas. Tsunamis can damage the environment, help the environment. Let's start with wildfires and forest fires. I'm going to circle these because there's something super specific about them. Wildfires and forest fires... Can, oh, wait, wait, I forgot the most important thing. Happen naturally. Does anyone want to explain what that means? No. Oh, yes. Happen naturally. Does anyone want to explain to me what that means? Nolan, nice yes. and loud. It means that it'll just, it'll just happen. It'll right, it'll just happen. They're not man-made. It occurs naturally in nature. But some of these can occur naturally in nature, but a person can also have a little bit of an effect on them. For example, a wildfire slash forest fire, there could be a thunderstorm and lightning could strike in California and a wildfire would be created that happened naturally. But some terrible person could also have a match in the woods that could also start a wildfire. So they can occur naturally here or a terrible person could also start one, okay? So that one can happen naturally or it can also be caused by a person. Nolan. What is like one, like a person in the water? I don't know what it's called, but yeah. Anyways, next one. A blizzard. Can Mrs. Kneifel or any other person make a blizzard happen? No. 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 That one's stuck there. A tsunami, fun fact, if there was like a bomb to go up in the ocean, that could be caused, that could cause a tsunami. Or so that one, shh. If I didn't call on you, I don't want to hear your voice. I don't want to hear you shout out. So a tsunami could be caused a little bit by a person if a bomb or a rock, I don't know, a torpedo or whatever went off that could cause a tsunami. But blizzard can't cause that on our own. Hurricane. Can a person be like, yeah, let's have a hurricane today? No. no. That we can't help. Neither can a typhoon. A sandstorm. Can I start my own sandstorm? No. 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 Can I start my own tornado? No. Can I start my own volcano? No. no. But these mud No, you cannot. I don't know what tornado you're starting, but I've never seen a person start a tornado. <laughs> All right, but mudslide, landslide, and avalanche, those could all occur in nature. Like... There could be a lot of rain and a mudslide could happen. You know, some rocks could naturally shift and a landslide could happen. Some snow could melt over here, causing an avalanche. But a person could also be the cause of that. Like, I could personally move some snow to cause an avalanche. Or I could personally move some rocks or something. So those could be caused by a human, but they also occur naturally in nature. Evan. So, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess that you said Evan, we're not getting that deep into it. I cannot snap my fingers. I cannot change. I cannot move 
snow to cause a blizzard. That's not how it works, okay? Yes, Landon. Um, a water spout. About the part of a tsunami, um, it can happen naturally by uh. I literally said it can happen naturally, know, but a person could also know, make I'm effects. So why? All of these can happen naturally. That's why we're talking about it. Literally, natural disasters. I know, I don't how long. We're not talking about that right now. We're just talking about what we know. We're past that. All right. Oh, so. Yes. Why is it not like one? You guys are asking a lot of questions for our intro right now. Uh, you guys are really killing me. We're just talking about the introduction of what we have to say. Okay, Angelina, please grace me with what you have to say. You know, humans actually can move snow and cause an- Yes, yeah. Okay, you gotta listen. I am aware that humans can move snow. We talked about that with an avalanche, but a human cannot start a blizzard, which is what I said. Humans cannot start a blizzard, which is why it is naturally occurring. Okay? I clearly know humans can move snow. Okay? I, I've shoveled snow before. I'm aware of that. So make sure you're sticking with what we're talking about. Because I said humans, literally I said humans could move it in an avalanche and cause that. But a human cannot start a blizzard. Okay, no more hands up. I don't want to hear anything else. Nope. Let me get through what I need to get through because we're getting way off topic. So... For the next five weeks, we're going to be learning all about different types of natural disasters. We're not going to talk about all of them. I don't think we touch sandstorm. I don't. I know we don't touch typhoon, but we're going to definitely hear about volcanoes. We're definitely going to hear about tornadoes. Um, I'm trying to think what other ones there are. I haven't read this. Story. Oh, a flash flood and flood. That was the other one I meant to circle. So floods can occur naturally, but a person could also like dam up a river and cause a flood, right? But floods can also occur naturally. So that's another one that's circled. So a dam is a thing. It's not a bad word all the time, people. Anyways, so those different types of things come, can be caused naturally, or they can also have a little bit of an effect from a human. So a human can make it. We have earthquake up there. So, um, but a human can't just start an earthquake for fun. So the things not circled are things that we personally cannot start as humans. Do we always know when a natural disaster is going to happen? No. Like, can I tell you on uh, March 14th, there's going to be a tornado? Can I predict that? No, absolutely not. Can I say, oh, in uh, 3.7 days, there's going to be a hurricane? No. no, we can't predict that. Now, now that we live in 2020, there is lots and lots of awesome technology that lets us kind of predict. And there's scientists whose sole job is to study natural disasters, and they can predict when they think something's going to happen, you know, when there's a tornado, we have radar and we're able to get a little bit of a notice for a tornado, right? But we cannot say at exactly 1133, the tornado is going to drop down. That's just not predictable. But we do have technology and scientists that can help us predict. Like there's a person we're going to learn about that literally his sole job is studying earthquakes. And that person tries to predict when the next earthquake is going to happen. Sometimes he's right, sometimes he's not right, but that is literally his job. Evan, that is not something you interrupt my teaching for, okay? Because I'm trying to teach. So there, we're going to learn a lot about who studies natural disasters and how we try to predict them. Obviously, our predictions are not always right. Obviously, we cannot figure it out right. But if I'm a scientist that studies volcanoes, pretend that's my job instead of teaching, I study volcanoes. And here's this volcano that's been inactive. It's been sitting quiet for the past four years. But all of a sudden, it starts smoking. Then would that lead me to maybe making a prediction it's going to erupt soon? Yes, because something changed. It went from being inactive to now it's smoking. So maybe I could make a prediction saying, oh, snap, might be erupting soon, and I could let people know. Okay? So the main part about natural disasters is they cannot always be predicted. We cannot say exactly what day or exactly what time they're going to happen. And, of course, the worst part about natural disasters is can they cause destruction of property? Yes. They can ruin your homes. People pass away. People get caught up in storms, hurricanes, tornadoes. All of these natural disasters have probably killed someone one time or another. Sometimes we make it, people make it through and everyone's fine, but lots of times people pass away in really bad natural disasters. They lose homes. We lose properties. Animals get hurt and all of that. Zachary. I wish somebody died from a sandstorm. 
if you are outside and have no protection and you breathe, you breathe in enough sand, you're going to suffocate. If you have no way to cover your face and your nose and stuff, you could suffocate from the sand getting in your lungs. Um, that's not important. All right. So, no, I'm teaching. Yes, Mark. Do you think like the like the corona is a is a natural disaster or no? I have, it's a it's a pandemic, not a natural disaster. Yeah, it's a pandemic. Yeah, I put um, a pandemic. I I put pandemic, and I'm like, is the pandemic a natural disaster? And I'm like, wait, not a pandemic, maybe like a virus. I don't know. That's not well. If it is, I don't know. But we're talking about things that occur naturally in nature. I mean, somewhere, somehow, the virus had to start. It's not like, I don't, you know, I'm not getting into that because I don't even know. Evan, what do you need? Um, Beat into death? death? Yeah. I have no idea. I've never been in a sandstorm. I don't know how hard they are. Maybe we'll find out. All right. So, yeah, but you've not been in a legitimate sandstorm. You probably, no, you haven't. I'm 100% sure you haven't. You were probably in some wind. You were probably in some wind. It was not a legitimate sandstorm, okay? It was not a natural disaster. So, that was a really good start for where we're starting. But now I have a question to ask you all. It's a lovely question. We're going to be thinking of this question throughout the rest of our module, okay? So, for the next five weeks, we're going to have this lovely question on our brain, okay? We're going to have this question on our brain for the next five weeks. So I want you all to think of it right now. We might have some answers right now. All right, so the question is, how can learning about natural disasters help keep us safer? Does anyone have an idea? How can learning about a natural disaster help keep me safe, help keep you safe, et cetera, et cetera? Marissa. Because learning about people At all times, I need to be protected from a hurricane. Yes. I personally do. Eh, I don't know. I mean, to protect your, so you know how to protect yourself, yes, but I wouldn't say it all, all times. For some natural disasters, you got to be all in times, but a hurricane, no, I don't need to be protected from a hurricane right now. Lillian. So if you, like, get, like, caught up in there and, like, clearing, you can, like, protect yourself? Right, so you know how to protect yourself. Stay seated or I'm going to take it. You know how to protect yourself if something happens. You know what to do in case of one of these. So, like, for example, we know what to do if there's a tornado here at school, right? We go in the hallway, we kneel down, we protect our neck, we protect our head, right? We know that because we've studied or someone has studied what a tornado does. So we know that tornadoes can damage the building and then stuff could fall on us. And that's why we have to protect our head and protect our neck. So studying that tornado and what a tornado, the damage a tornado causes has taught us how to keep ourselves safe during a tornado, correct? Correct. Okay. Zachary. Uh, tells you when to evacuate. Studying um, natural disasters can help prepare us for when we might need to go, like having that meteorologist tell us, okay, there might be a tornado in the next 46 minutes, you know, it's might, it's going to hit this area. Now it's the time to evacuate down to your basement or go to a house that has a basement or something like that. So it can help us prepare and help us help us be prepared and help us what to know to do. Nod your head if you agree with that. Okay, so we are, like I said, gonna learn lots and lots more about natural disasters. Tomorrow, we will not be talking about natural disasters because tomorrow's an e-learning day and instead you will have a review poem assignment. On Wednesday, we have a short read and it's a good one to start off on. It is about who studies natural disasters, like who's in charge of that. Because they're scientists that strictly study natural disasters. That's their job. Just like my job's teaching, their job is studying natural disasters. But we have four vocabulary words today. Only four that go along with our short little article this week. Nolan, I'm going to need you to go put that in the trash right now. 
So we are going to go over our four vocabulary words. And of course you have vocabulary homework as always, but you only have to do three of the words. So you only have to write three sentences. Our first vocabulary word is notable. N-O-T-A-B-L-E. It is an adjective, so a descriptive word. Notable. Does anyone want to give me a guess on what they think notable means? Don't look at the pictures. I'm letting you know right now. The pictures do not help you this week. Don't be looking at the pictures. Zach. The storm was very... No, I want a definition, not a sentence. I want a definition. Evan. Notable, like, it's, 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 it's like you're able to see it. Like, oh, I can tell it's notable that that is blue, that that color is blue. So, like, it's obvious. Uh, you're kind of on the right track. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. Something that is notable is worth noticing, okay? So I would be like, it's note, you know, her hair color is notable. It's worth noticing that her hair color changed. Or your homework is worth noting or is notable, meaning it's worth noticing your homework. So this picture is a picture of a hurricane. The sentence that goes along with this is the scientists measured a notable increase in the hurricane's strength. So it was noticeable that the hurricane maybe went from a 0.10 to a 3.2. Okay, category one to a category three. All right, so it was notable. Something worth noticing is notable. So Mrs. Kneifel's class, it is notable that some of you guys don't seem very engaged. Mrs. Kneifel is not going to be sad if you don't do lovely on your homework because it doesn't look like you're paying attention. So, notable. Something worth noticing. And maybe you want to take a mental note of it. Zach. Um, oh, yeah. What is that, like, F1 stuff mean? Like, F1, F2? It's yeah, it's just how the... Okay. That's how strong a tornado is. The higher the number, the stronger it is. Well, that's because we're not meteorologists and we're not scientists. The people that created that know exactly what it means we the natural public don't necessarily need to know what it means okay all right next one dun, 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 is for some reason people are having struggle or struggling what this means but i feel like it's a word we've heard before it is spontaneous i don't even know what spontaneous means no I, like i said a hundred times the picture does not help you this week what is spontaneous evan your hand is up yeah, you're pretty much on the right track. Unpredictable is a good way to put it. Angelina, do you want to add to that? I would say spontaneous means like um, like a sudden impulse or something like that. Yeah, an impulse. That's a good way to put it. So a spontaneous action is something that happens naturally or isn't planned. Yeah. So Mrs. Kneifel spontaneously decides to give you 10 extra sentences for homework. I didn't have that plan. I just spontaneously decided to do it. Or most natural disasters happen spontaneously, meaning they happen naturally and we had no warning. We didn't know. It's just, you know, oh, there's going to be a tornado tomorrow. We had no warning. Okay. So things that happen that aren't planned are spontaneous. Dun, da, da, da. Spontaneous. Some people are super, you can actually describe people as spontaneous, like people that don't have a plan and they're just go with the flow people like, oh yeah, spontaneous. Landon, throw that away. That is not paying attention, sir. Some people are super spontaneous people. Mrs. Kneifel, not the most spontaneous person. I like to know what I'm going to do every single day, okay? I'm not like a fly by the seat of my pants like, oh yeah, let's go jump in a river. That's not Mrs. Kneifel. I like things planned. Raise your hand if you think you're a spontaneous person that you like split decisions and you don't mind when plans change and stuff any of you spontaneous people landon thinks he's spontaneous angelina says she's spontaneous rochelle and evan all right so we got some spontaneous people now raise your hand if you like a plan you like to know what's going on you like the agenda up there you like to know what's happening oh, mrs kanaiko yeah. likes to know what's happening every day all right, so just, to, you know, spontaneous, that's a way to describe people. Some people are super spontaneous. Mrs. Kneifel, not a spontaneous person. Let me rephrase it. Sometimes I'm spontaneous, but not all the time. I so can say that. Sentence. Feel free to be thinking about that for when you do your homework later. If I see another person's water bottle without, I'm about to ban water bottles is what's going to happen, and you'll be able to drink at lunch and at restroom breaks, okay? Stop 
crunching your water bottles. Stop taking the little rip tag off. It's unnecessary. That's you not paying attention, okay? So go through that away, Marissa. You are the third person in the past 10 minutes I had to ask to throw that away. That is ridiculous. You guys are in fifth grade. You can leave a water bottle alone, okay? Our next word has two definitions, and we're going to talk about both of the definitions. The word is tremor. Once again, don't look at the picture. The picture doesn't help. What is a tremor? Julian? Yeah, a tremor is a smaller earthquake, okay? So an earthquake that destroys, you know, a 60 floor building is not going to be a tremor, okay? An earthquake that's small and doesn't really do any damage would be considered a tremor. Good job. But there is another type of tremor. Does anyone know the other type of tremor? Zachary, you want to give it a try? No, it has nothing to do with land. Angelina has to do with the body, actually. A small shake, a tremor is like something that you can't keep still. Like, say your hand has a tremor, it means your hand can't keep still at all. Right, perfect. So that, that actually, has a lot of older people have a tremor. It doesn't always have to be older people, but a tremor is just uncontrolled shaking of a body part. It doesn't mean that you're cold or you're scared or you're nervous. Your body just naturally shakes and there's nothing you can do about it. A lot of older people's hands shake or like their jaw might shake a little bit, or like their head. And that is just a tremor. It happens a lot with older people. Um, doesn't have to be older people, though. Regular aged people could have a tremor. So a tremor is a small earthquake or an uncontrolled shaking of a body part. Yes. I, I can't believe I didn't know that because I literally watched the video last night. Oh, yeah. So it's totally, tremors are actually probably more common than you think. But normally tremors are so tiny, you don't even really notice them. A lot of the time, they're just so small, you wouldn't even notice someone having a tremor. But, um, yeah. And our final one is hazard. What's a hazard? If something's a hazard, what does that mean, Nolan? Yeah, it's a danger. Okay, so you could say, oh, watch out for the storm. It is a major hazard. Or, or oh, that water is spilled on the floor is a hazard to the students yeah so a hazard is just dangerous so let's go through these one more time notable is worth noticing spontaneous is the action that happens naturally and isn't planned tremor is a small earthquake or uncontrollable shaking of a body part and hazard is a danger so that is your homework it is the same vocabulary homework we have as always don't get off yet because i have to talk about what you're doing tomorrow um, it is the exact same um, whatever vocab as always, except you only have to do three sentences this week. So that means three capital letters, three punctuation marks. You need to spell at least three vocab words right. And your sentence needs to make sense. Try to use hazard as it is. Don't try to use hazardous or anything like that. I don't want you to add ed or ing if you don't have to. We do not have grammar today, Isaac, because it is a spelling week and we already have the spelling live, Isaac. So if you missed it, it should already be posted. There's no grammar this week. It is a spelling week. So you have that vocabulary homework. But real quick, before everyone gets off and before my people here at home get on their, here at school, get on their Chromebook, Landon and Marissa, I want to talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow is an e-learning day. And I know we just started module three right now, but we're going to go backtrack to module two and you are going to do a poem um, pattern tomorrow. So tomorrow there's going to be a picture of a poem. And line one is obviously going to be in A. And then you're going to see how many other line A's there are and how many other, you know, if there's a line B, a line C, whatever. There's 17 lines in the poem. So that means you're going to have a total of 17 letters. You're going to have A, enter. Okay, maybe the next one's another A, enter, B. Okay, just like we did last week, like five times. We even did it together on Friday when we were looking at that test. So you're going to have a picture of a poem. All you have to do, line one equals, or line one dash A, line two dash whatever. It should literally take you 10 minutes, literally, like no more than 10 minutes. And then, of course, you have to read for AR for 20 minutes because you don't have reading RTI tomorrow. I'll pick that up. It's fine. It just, the magnets probably came off. Um, It's fine. It's my dry erase board. The magnets came off. It is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. I'll fix it. It's been hanging up there for a long time. The things just came off. Not a big deal. So that is what you're doing tomorrow. But Mrs. Kaifel's feeling really nice. And I actually might post it tonight. Maybe you guys could get a jump start on your e-learning. Your vocabulary. What? Yes, but it better be an emergency. Actually, be careful. 
with getting out of there with that dry erase board, Landon. You should still be listening through. I'm still talking. Your vocab is due on Wednesday, like always. But your e-learning, try to get it done tomorrow because that would make the most sense, right? If you just get it done tomorrow. But I do think I'm going to post it today because Mrs. Kneipel's feeling extra nice. Are there any questions about our grammar, or not our grammar homework, about our vocabulary homework or our e-learning day assignment tomorrow? Any questions? If not, you at home are free to leave. This will be posted. If not, you at school may get started on your vocabulary homework, or you can work on your spelling homework, or you may read for AR. Those are your choices. Goodbye. So on the way back.